All right, uh, here's a view you probably haven't seen. Uh, this is all the clutter in my, uh, in my garage here. So what we're gonna do is I had a viewer ask about um, a project that I did a while ago. I showed off some little uh, 915 megahertz um, oscillator cans and they said, and I showed how you change the voltage on them, you can get them to tune. And somebody says, oh, you didn't show them being modulated. So uh, I thought I would go ahead and play with that and see if I could get them to modulate. Uh, so we can see way over there, I'm getting a spectrum. And uh, it does show modulation. And I am using the breadboard right there and I needed to use a decade resistor box to get some level set. So the level I'm setting is the modulation width uh, or deviation. And I'm using my uh, function generator over there. And I've got a test lead coming close to a little six foot inch antenna and that follows this cord here over to this box and this box is tuned to that frequency and I think you can hear that we are actually getting a tone and let me change the uh, frequency of modulation Turn that down. All right, so uh, enough of my clutter. Let's, uh, let's go and uh, take a look at this thing and I'll show you what I had to do to make it work. All right, so uh, here we go. Uh, this is one of the near field probes I was using and here's the antenna that I was using. i remove that. So here's the circuit. Um, it is using one of those oscillator cans um, so a couple things that I did, I'll draw, I'll draw the schematic for this. A couple things that I did was uh, put a big bypass capacitor across this. It needs a very stable voltage, otherwise it drifts off frequency. And uh, I noticed that it was very, uh, uh, it would move frequency with input voltage with VCC. So uh, I added a regulator. So I have a five volt regulator uh, dedicated just for this chip. And then uh, the natural oscillation frequency is, um, below 900 megahertz and I wanted to bring it up into the uh, 33 centimeter band um, so uh, I needed to put some bias voltage on the uh, tuning pin so there's a, a VCO pin on these cans and the VCO pin uh, puts a DC bias on a varactor diode that increases the capacitance uh, or decreases the capacitance however you want to think of it and um, it needs a certain voltage to go up to, I'm running at about 300, 913 megahertz right now. So 913, 913.4 megahertz. Um, and in order to do that, I needed about two and a half volt bias. And so I'm using a TL431 to generate that two and a half volts. I need that very, very stable as well. And then I need to inject it with a modulation. So I need to take that 2.5 volts and I need to wiggle it up and down a bit. So I'm mixing in uh, the audio oscillator with a capacitor here. And uh, yeah, so that's the verbal description. Let's go ahead and, and uh, draw a schematic and I'll show, you, uh, I'll show you what I did. All right, so this is what I came up with. Um, this is the oscillator can. It's an MQC 505-915. And um, I think the uh, fellow who uh, gave me these has a bunch of them. And I think he's going to put them on eBay so you can watch out on eBay and see if, uh, see if you can pick one of those up if you want to play, the, play at home. Um, so I needed a good uh, reference voltage. So I have a 78 LO5 coming in. So I have five volts here. Uh, there's a 10 microfarad 0 0.01, and then there's a 47 microfarad very close to the uh, can. Everything's smoothed out. So five volts is going into the can. These will operate at higher voltages too if you want to operate them at 12 volts or whatever. They don't care. Um, and then this is the control pin. 
uh, for the uh, VCO. Um, and uh, let's see here. Let me go ahead and put down, the pinouts are kind of weird. Uh, this is pin one. Uh, let's see here, da, 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 I'm doing that wrong. This is pin one. And this is pin seven. And one, two, three, four, let's see. Two, four, two, four, six, eight. Yeah, so this is pin eight. This is pin eight. Um, and this is pin 10. And this is pin 16. 16 is here. There we go. All right. Um, so that's what I did. The oscillator, I think, is at 100, 100 millivolts. So in order to set the deviation, I think I have about a 10 kilohertz deviation set, plus or minus 10 kilohertz deviation. Uh, the bigger the voltage swing here, the larger the deviation you will get. And uh, you can set that by whatever voltage your oscillator has, and then how much resistance is here. You'll, you'll get some resistive dividing and stuff going on. So I, I found that this, this worked good for me, but you'd, you'd have to play with this here, um, and maybe this resistor here to get it to the values you want to. Um, but yeah, that's how it happens. So basically I'm mixing this voltage. This is gonna be 2.5 volts, two and a half volts, and then this voltage swing. So this gets added with this, uh, at, this at that point there, and then it goes into the part. And it is modulating. And uh, yeah, seems to work okay. Um, I'm not sure how fast you can modulate this. I've modulated it up to about five kilohertz, um, maybe 10. Uh, so I think it can go, it can, it can be modulated pretty quickly. Um, the one thing that's very uh, sensitive on this part, it, it does drift with frequency. So everything needs to be super, super stable. Um, so if I was going to put this in a product, um, I would want to make sure this is on a big ground plane, make sure it's RF connected really, really well, and put this whole thing under a shield. Um, it's very, very sensitive. So, um, it, uh, it needs to be isolated and, and solid. So you want to separate the grounds. You would want to have the grounds of this float. So when they move around, so you'd have to have a star ground down here. I don't know if people know about star grounds, but you can have, a, you can have different grounds in your system and they, they, all, uh, they all go to one point. And uh, because all the uh, grounds go to one point, it looks like a star. And, and um, so these grounds here would be, would be uh, a separate a separate portion that went off so if anything wiggled out here it wouldn't affect or more importantly if anything wiggled let's say on this one it wouldn't wiggle this one because this will be solid and it'll hopefully separate the two but that's not always an easy that's not always an easy task um, it may be that you actually need to uh, uh, just, you know put put a ferrite or do something to that ground and make it more uh, make it more solid and isolated so uh, the art of grounding. Uh, I learned I learned about that the hard way and and was able to su succeed. But uh, I was designing an instrument that had to go down to uh, 70 picoamps, and uh, grounding was everything. Shielding was everything. Separating grounds, a digital section from analog section. It was really really hard, and it took about it took me about three tries to get it right. And it finally did. Um, but anyway, yeah, there you go. I'm sure somebody was going to ask, hey, we didn't get to see the modulation on the spectrum analyzer. So yeah, here it is. Uh, this is a uh, 10 kilohertz modulation. Uh, so you can see the uh, classic FM modulation. Uh, there you go. And you can see it's, uh, it does drift around a bit. And that's because I'm, I'm moving my hand. As I move my hand over the uh, breadboard, you can see it shift to the right. I move my hand away, it shifts back. So it's very, very sensitive to... Uh, external influences, so it definitely needs to be under a can. Um, but yeah, there you go. Nice FM modulation.